so I wanted to talk um, today a bit about money and finances. Um, I found this on the internet. This is from the Jehovah's Witness. Um, they produce some quite nice um, descriptions and, and illustrations of things. So we're just going to have a little bit of a look about money. Um, what I want to say is, whilst this is supposedly a children's talk, one of the things I notice when we talk about money is children don't really understand the value of money. I'll tell you a quick story that happened that I was aware of. Uh, this is going back many years, teaching, uh, teaching in a primary school. One of the teachers, uh, she was retired and she was coming in doing casual work and she made the comment, we were talking about children moving out of home, and she made the comment that uh, her son grew up, went to university, started his first job and was still living at home. And she said, well, you're living at home, you're earning an income, you can now pay rent. And he said to her, he said, oh, you're taking advantage. So of course he then moved out. A week later, she gets a phone call, mum, can we meet for dinner? So he takes his mum out for dinner and he said, I'm terribly sorry. <laughs> I really didn't understand what I was talking about. So children don't understand the value of money because they don't, of course, have to live in the real world and support themselves. So with that caveat, we're going to have a look at this. So this is all about money in the New Testament, in the Old Testament. So let's have a look at bits of it. I know it's quite small, so I'm going to enlarge it. Here is currency and weights in the Hebrew, Hebrew scriptures. And one of the things you'll notice, of course, is the, the coinage that they use in the Old and the New Testament, they are very unfamiliar words. So it takes us quite a bit to understand them. So the gerar, the bekar, the pim, the shekel is probably the word that we know the best, the minor, and the talent is also one we know very well from stories in the Bible. And notice they're all, um, they're all in terms of weight, because the weight of something you, you would give you a sense of the value of it and that might be a different value of some other substance that's the same weight. So this is how, uh, you know, when money begins, it's all about weights of things and comparing the value of one thing with the value of another. So on. It gets quite complicated, but you'll see these words crop up in scriptures from time to time. So that's the Old Testament. And then we move to this long line at the bottom and these different coins. So these are New Testament coins. So over here on the left, the smallest value, the lepton, quadrans, asarion, denarius is an, it, probably a word we know quite well. We see that crop up in, uh, in scripture quite a bit. Um, one of the things I just want to say is when we read the scriptures, sometimes they translate these words out of it. So, for example, um, Luke chapter 12, verse 6, we hear these words, Are not five sparrows sold for two copper coins? Now, the two copper coins, the word actually is the Asarian, the third of those coins. It's, it's not two copper coins that the Lord said. He's actually using the currency name. And the other one I thought of particularly is the widow's mites. You know, then one poor widow came and threw in two mites, which make a quadrants, the, the lepton. The, the word uses lepta, two lepta. Um, so it's, that's, the, that's the denomination that she's throwing into the treasury, you see? We translate that word out into something different. Um, and then we think of, no, I think of parables of the Lord, the workers in the vineyard. You know, there's the man who goes to the market and employs people and agrees to give them a denarius a day. So just notice um, that the denarius here, the Roman coin, fourth from the left, is indicated as being about a day's wages you know, on that timeline down at the bottom. Okay. Uh, and then of course we're familiar with the talent as well. And uh, another one is this, the story of the unforgiving servant who owed talents of money. Uh, and then there's the, the, the um, servants who are given a certain number of talents to, you know, to look after while their master uh, goes away for a time. 
and just notice how they've indicated that a talent is about 20 years wages. Now if you add that up, I sort of went through the process of thinking, well I earn this much, da 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 da, 20 years wages, you can imagine it's quite a bit. I think it probably sits somewhere in the two to two and a half million dollars is a talent. And you think about the, the quantities of talents that were talking, spoken about in that parable. A lot of money. And we miss that when we read the, the Bible in our text because we don't know what a talent is. Okay. So I just thought it was a really interesting thing just to mention about the money. Because especially when Jesus speaks, we're familiar with the Lord using agricultural and, and plant and growing parables, but he also uses a lot of money and finance parables as well.